Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another YouTube video. I am All In Crypto, and today we've got a pretty interesting video lined up for you. We're going to be looking at a white paper published by the World Economic Forum in regards to pathways to crypto asset regulations, a global approach. This is very interesting and actually very timely, given what we've seen the SEC um, launch in regards to a crusade against the blockchain industry. It is absolutely my belief that the ALE already have a plan for this technology. There's a number of reasons why I think this. One big one is the fact um, that this industry came about at too much of a perfect time. It was born out of 2008, when you can argue the cracks in the traditional financial system really started to show. And the fact that this is providing an alternative, trustless, valuable system, perhaps hints to divine intervention or um, a greater plan at play. And certainly if you've done any looking into CBDCs and all of these other things, you will probably be already on board with what I'm saying. So it's also my belief that regulators um, are not that dumb, just like the Federal Reserve is not that dumb. Isn't it funny in politics and in certainly with regulatory agencies in the US, they always play things off and the UK, by the way, and Europe that, oh, it was a mistake. We didn't foresee this coming or, you know, um, they kind of play ignorant to the whole situation when in actual fact, I believe that they are not idiots and very much aware of what they're doing. And there is ulterior motives behind the scenes in many occasions. And actually, I do believe that what you're seeing with the SEC is a, a power grab first and foremost before the SEC. But actually, there's likely ulterior motives with why they're doing what they're doing. Um, one, potentially to be to stall the industry whilst global standards get put in place. They are not going to eradicate crypto. The World Economic Forum that we see very clearly demonstrates that the World Economic Forum, by any for anybody who doesn't know, is of course headed up by this man here, Mr. Klaus Schwab, who you can see there is what appears to be a statue of Lenin behind him. Anybody who is unfamiliar with Bolshevism and 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 how this saga unfolded, please do go and look into it. It is a uh, crucial part of history and the fact that this individual um, has a statue potentially of Lenin in his nice um, red tie, which I think is very telling, uh, could potentially give you some insight into what the World Economic Forum and, and, and what this individual are all about. So talking about crypto standards, we're going to get into it all. I want to start things off in regards to some of the theatre that I think is actually taking place. I do think that a lot of this is theatre. I think a lot of politics is theatre, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and ultimately, by theatre, I mean that people, they know it's a play. They know the alternative, and uh, or not alternative, the actual real um, goal that's trying to be achieved. So I really want to kick things off with a clip from McHenry, who is a congressional member, of him actually talking about um, the crypto space and giving some backlash in regards to Gary Gensler and his kind of tyrannical crusade uh, against the cryptocurrency market. So let's go ahead and get into this clip before we examine and take a look at the World Economics Forum's proposals for a global standard of regulation. It's quite encouraging for us as an industry. However, you know, um, when you look into CBDCs and all that, it can get kind of dark. Uh, Mr. Garrison, Dr. Sarir, uh, let's start with you. Mr. Garrison, how many foreign regulators have proposed new regulatory frameworks for digital assets? You're looking at about half a dozen to a dozen. Okay, including Europe. Including Europe. And Europe is uh, Europe is far more advanced than we are. Okay. Yes. Uh, we see venture capitalists now deploying offices. American venture capital firms going there to to seek uh, to invest. Um, are other countries implementing new regulations around digital assets, specific to digital assets? They are. Whole, uh, whole cloth new regulations. Okay. And do you think uh, consumers are protected here in the United States by, by our lack of clear rules? No, they are not. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sreer, um, how does the threat of enforcement action stymie innovation and hold back developers from new projects here in the United States? Lack of clarity around regulations involving the issuance of tokens. Uh, holds back quite a few uh, innovators from actually residing in the United States, and we're seeing actual uh, people who are active in this field uh, move wholesale out of our borders to other jurisdictions. And that's been pressure on you to develop your technology overseas, not here in the United States. 
Well, I'm very happy to be in the United States myself, but, uh, but I can see the pressure on other people. Okay. Now, Mr. Garrison, in terms of the cost structure of, uh, of potential action, enforcement action by the SEC, what does that look like for, for a firm? What, what does that look like? I don't want to get into the book of big law and what they charge, but it's not cheap, right? It's not. You're hundreds of thousands of dollars in, into the millions, depending on the charges. Uh, just to add to that, actually, XRP's lawsuit has already cost them nearly $200 million. I should say Ripple, Brad, and Chris's lawsuit. This feels like theater to me, because let me tell you right now, the inevitability of blockchain, if you can't see that right now, I don't know what to tell you. Everything is going to be ran on a blockchain. Everything. We already know it's revolutionizing the financial industry, but things like identity, everyone has an identity. These are just a couple of thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of use cases that blockchain solves. And a lot of this are, is Gary that dumb? I think we'd like him to be as the villain, but he's the villain in this story. And, you know, some of these individuals are the kind of heroes. Um, but one thing I've found with talking, certainly with uh, maybe institutional managers, people that are involved in the blockchain space and it, from a institutional kind of level is there's clear demand there. And that demand, just like with BlackRock, just like with all these firms, wouldn't be there if they honestly thought that this was going to be an industry that was going to get regulated out of existence. There's no way of that happening. Um, it's more of a power grab right now with the SEC. But let, let's play this because this is really interesting. Then we'll look at the World Economic Forum document or white paper. Okay, so as I said, we want a purpose-built regime for, the, for digital assets, right? We want it, uh, same risk, same regulation, that's the focus. Uh, Mr. Sexton, um, in, in the draft here, uh, we've said that decentralization is the key. Um, if a digital asset association is associated with a decentralized and functional network, they'd be treated as commodities. Uh, would the CFTC and, the, and your organization be able to serve as primary regulators over the digital commodity spot market? Chairman McHenry, if that's the definition as far as a, a commodity is concerned, then the CFTC and NFA would be able to implement that definition within uh, and, and regulate that in the spot market. Yes. Okay. Interesting that the CFTC and the SEC can't even work out what this is. The Hinman documents... Although I think for XRP, it was a lot of what was already known. They did bring up some really important points, the controversy in all this. It's just, it, this feels fake to me, everything that's going on. Um, it, 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 and we know that actually part of any regular, uh, any technology, technology, technological advancement is meted with regulations. Motoring, we always bring up the railroads, whatever it is. Um, the airplane industry, you know, you name it. There's always regulations typically that come out harsh to begin with. But this kind of regulation, it already seems so obvious where this space is going. And for, quite frankly, crazy actions to have been taken, that the only conclusion you can come up with why they have been is because it's a power grab. It all seems a little bit theatrical to me, guys. Okay, so over here in the Financial Services Committee, we have securities law protections for consumers. Uh, we have consumer protection that is a key part of our discussions. Is there like-kind consumer protection in the world of commodities? Absolutely. Uh, everything from segregation, capital requirements, risk disclosures, you monitor the trading that occurs, uh, the exchanges do on the exchanges. There's very similar type of uh, customer protections are in place with regard okay. to retail participants. Dr. Schreer, uh, about, about decentralization. What are the features, what are the end goal, what's the end goal state of a decentralized network, that, a functional decentralized network? What are the attributes of it? G give us some, some sort of, not, not your 401 class, maybe your 201 class uh, from uh, your college days. Simply put, a decentralized network aims to provide a service uh, wherein even though some of the actors in the system might be uh, what we call Byzantine, they might be acting in, uh, in, uh, uh, in an adversarial fashion, the system is still able to maintain its safety and integrity guarantees for all of its users. These networks are more resilient than other computer network systems. Okay. So we see the Securities and Exchange Commission ramping up uh, their enforcement action, timed for our hearings. I would, I would think that has to be some contemplation from our friends over there. Um, what we're trying to build is consensus around changes in law 
around uh, a new object, a new asset, uh, a, a new architecture, new digital architecture. Um, Mr. Garrison, if you have an innovator who wants to set up shop here in the United States in the world of digital assets, how would you advise them? Uh, I tell them that the laws, the regulations are very uncertain. And often those conversations end with the entrepreneur deciding to either launch offshore or to drop the idea altogether. So let's pivot to stable coins. Uh, Mr. Allaire, how are you, where are you currently regulated? Where is Circle currently regulated? Circle is regulated in a number of jurisdictions. We're regulated across the United States by uh, state payments and banking supervisors. Uh, we're regulated in Singapore as a major payment institution. Uh, we're in registration with the French government, and we're also regulated by the FCA in the UK. Do you comply with uh, any money laundering uh, rules here in the United States? Yes, absolutely. Comprehensive BSA AML programs, which we've had in place for a very long time. Okay. Are, are you licensed in the state of New York? Uh, we have a bit license in New York, and we're also licensed as a money transmitter in the state of New York. Okay. Uh, we'll leave it there. It was just to kind of get a sense of just how ridiculous this all is. Um, and actually, it's very interesting that a few months ago, the World Economic Forum actually released this white paper called A Pathway to Crypto Asset regulations a global approach in the evolving crypto asset ecosystem coordinated regulatory framework across the jurisdictions is a complex and formidable task given the unique features of the underlying technology the limitless opportunities it presents the need for global coordination is obvious this is first line is just a repeat of the, the first this white paper sets out to understand and highlight the needs and it challenges in developing a global approach to crypto asset regulations crypto asset so crypto asset regulations where did we see crypto asset securities not that long ago so are we going to now have this crypto asset what happens when crypto gets regulated as an asset regulated as an asset you get ETF approval. We've done a video on what happened with gold with their first ETF in 2004 and the S&P in 1993 when they had their first. Um, go and look at the price of both of these and what happened after those events. That's just one aspect of this. Not to mention that now every institution like the Bank of America and Fidelity, which bought MicroStrategy only because that's a regulated security that they can gain exposure to Bitcoin through. What happens when that floodgate gets brought forward it's coming and it seems like Gensler is stalling that for whatever reason we're going to see it's going to go to court and we're going to get it worked out i just pray that um some of these smaller cryptos and smaller fun, uh, foundations probably might not have even a couple of million to spare on the fight um certainly with the secs why most people settle with the secs because they've got like a 95 percent win rate because they've got an unlimited resource of cash and, and I don't even think you have to pay, um, what's the word where you have to, it, it, whoever wins, basically they get their fees paid for by the loser. So in doing so, it delves into the various regulatory approaches being adopted by different jurisdictions. The result of multi-stakeholder consolidation, um, which experts from the Digital Currency Governance Consortium comprising experts from public authorities, regulators, policy, maker bodies industry and academia the paper explores pathways to create a responsible crypto asset ecosystem globally and this of course 34 pages i found it very very uh, interesting here's the table of contexts you can see this paper um, includes the need for global approach for crypto assets. I'll leave a link to this in the description. You guys can read over it in your own time. The nature of technology, the prospects of uh, interconnectedness between a traditional financial and crypto assets. Go and check that video that we did in regards to Chainlink and their CCIP. Challenges to global approach, lack of standardized definitions, taxonomies, uh, classifications and understandings. Lack of standardized definitions. Hmm. ISO standards are upon us. You guys know the cryptocurrencies. And actually, we've gone over why ISO standards are so interesting and important. And actually, there may be opportunities here from an investment point of view, but that's not financial advice, just something that we, of course, uh, look at regularly on this channel. Um, it's going to be interesting. 
very interesting. But this actually comes out largely in favor of See if I can find it, if we go down to the regulatory point of view, you know, it talks about so much that we've already echoed, you know, how it's revolutionizing the, uh, the payment sector, so on and so forth. Recommendations for international organizations, international standard setting bodies, regional authorities and national governments must cooperate and collaborate with industry stakeholders to address technological, legal, regulatory and supervisionary challenges. Mm, supervisionary challenges. There are going to be many pros out of this industry. There's also going to be cons because they're going to use it against you just like they did the internet um, and, and pretty much everything else. Um, so the following recommendations are intended to address these challenges. Promote a harmonized understanding of uh, taxonomy, classification of crypto assets to be uh, uh, and activities. Distinguish the risks. Recommendation two, set out best practice and baseline regulatory standards for achieving the desired regulatory outcomes. Encourage passportable, passportability of entities and data sharing. So, of course, they want your data. We already know this. Um, conclusion and recommendations. We'll see what other recommendations they have here. So... Recommendation for regional national regulatory authorities. Um, at the regional and national level, policymakers and regulators should develop their respective regional national strategies by building on existing best practices. Okay. So we've seen Gensler be very stubborn towards not changing anything. The objective should be to provide certainty for innovators and empower users. Well, does that sound anything like what Gensler's doing? Is he that stupid? I don't think so. I think there's an alternative here, guys. Cross-sector coordination, regulatory certainty, using technology for regulation by design. All very, very interesting stuff. Recommendation, uh, recommendations for industry. Industry has a vital role to play to ensure global coordination in regulating crypto assets by engaging with regulators, advocates for clear, concise regula regulations across jurisdictions and collaborative involving robust voluntary framework, best practice rating system, technical standards. So here we go again with the standards. ISO standards are already in place. They've already got another number of cryptos there. It's going to be very, very interesting, guys. But let me tell you that I actually honestly think a lot of this is theatre. I think they've already figured out what they want to do with this industry. They're just figuring out how to get it so that they're in a position to do that. And I think Gensler is largely a puppet. This seems very theatrical to me. I don't think Jerome Powell is that stupid in regards to, oh, we just missed inflation. We didn't really foresee it. And then like they didn't think printing $7 trillion and bailing out a load of banks and all this other stuff wasn't what's going on. And when they get asked about a lot of this stuff, they just play dumb. Same way Gensler being like, well, I don't know if Ethereum's a security or not. Wait a minute. <laughs> You've been doing this for four years. If he worked for me, he'd have been fired. If he had spent four years trying to figure out how to answer one question, you'd be gone. Okay. Um, and the whole thing just seems, you know, the, 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 this word crypto asset, I think is very interesting because this is what it's going to become, you know, a crypto asset, a cryptographic asset. You know, everything is going to be run on the blockchain. You're going to have the entire debt markets, if they're still here, by the way, again, talking about Bitcoin coming in at the right time. So when the cracks were issued up in 2008, um, lots going on. But I won't ramble on for too much longer. Please go and check this article out, guys. I'll leave it a link in the description. Um, and on that note, I'm going to love and leave you. Enjoy your Wednesdays. Catch you in the next one.